Hey guys, Dr. Barron here with virtualheadachespecialist.com. A lot of you have asked me to talk about NDPH or New Daily Persistent Headache. So I want to do that briefly today. Uh, and the story goes like this. Patient comes in, hey doc, uh, I've had this headache that started July 9th, 2004. I woke with the headache. It's never gone away since. It's been daily continuous ever since it started. So this is a pretty typical NDPH story, and the characteristic in the history is that the patient often will recall the date the headache started. It's a pretty abrupt transition. They may have had episodic headaches in the past, they may have never had a headache, but it starts as a daily headache, persists for three or more months, um, and that's what NDPH looks like. Pattern most commonly is that it starts out of nowhere. Um, in the literature, if you look at the things that are associated with NDPH, the most common things are some kind of an upper respiratory infection, like a minor, minor cold, uh, sinus type of symptoms. You know, we've certainly seen a lot of this story with COVID. Um, second is some kind of an emotional or um, stressful event. Uh, and interestingly, fibromyalgia often is triggered by that type of a story. Uh, or maybe some minor medical procedure. That's the third thing that's often associated with it for some reason, but most often just happens for no good reason. <clears throat> the appearance of NDPH is that it most often looks like kind of an overlap between chronic migraine and chronic tension type headache. So migraineous features are like maybe some throbbiness or pulsating, um, sensitivity to light sound, maybe some nausea. Doesn't have to have any of that, but that sometimes is seen. Or tension type headache, which is more of an achy pressure band around the head. Um, so there doesn't have to be a specific character to it, um, but it often looks like an overlap between chronic migraine and chronic tension type headache. So I see a lot of patients that come in with this, you know, many times having gone to all kinds of uh, institutions uh, and it's been treated for chronic migraine for years. And there's often the missing of a very, very key piece in the history, which is that it began as a daily continuous headache. Um, and so it's been unsuccessfully treated for years as chronic migraine. The difference is that chronic migraine does not start as a daily continuous headache. It's something that gradually evolves over time. Uh, and so that's really the characteristic with NDPH is it comes down to that onset of the headache, daily persistent from day one for three plus months. Uh, the cause of this is felt to be essentially looking at it like an electrical pain circuit has switched on in the brain. It's turned on for some reason. And the goal becomes trying to find something that shuts it back off. Uh, the testing for NDPH, uh, my suggestion, my preference is uh, to get a brain MRI with and without contrast. Uh, this also helps to rule out spinal fluid leaks that can present as a daily headache, uh, inflammation, uh, other things like this. Uh, and with the MRI should be an MRA and an MRV looking at the arteries and the veins. That part of the test does not need contrast necessarily. Uh, routine blood work that I like to do ESR, CRP, these are inflammatory blood screens, uh, CBC, CMP, some routine labs, TSH for thyroid screening. I like to check vitamin D. Uh, there may be other testing as well, and it really depends on the, the story, the history, the symptoms, um, you know, as far as, you know, spinal taps, these kind of things are not typically something you need, but depending on the story, we may add that too. So it, it varies. Treatment. Treatment is... First of all, this is a very tough headache. Remember, it's, a, it's often very resistant to treatments, unfortunately. Um, the, the first lines that we usually use are gabapentin, which is actually a lousy medication for migraine. But in the literature, gabapentin is one that has some evidence. So we usually do that as a first line. And when you use gabapentin, the key is using the right dose. A lot of people just don't use the right dose. We typically go up slowly to a goal of like 600 to 900 three times a day. That's really the standard pain dose for most, although some can do fine with lower doses. Um, otherwise, we treat it like chronic migraine. Uh, we try to, you know, it's a trial and error process. We sometimes we use Botox. Um, actually, we often we use Botox for this, especially if medications aren't working. Uh, and the bottom line is hang in there. Uh, it can be a lot of uh, trial and error process, but it's a matter of finding something that hopefully just clicks that switch back off because it's a frustrating headache. You don't see anything on scans, which is even more frustrating. Um, so the goal is that you want to look at it electrically and we want to shut it off electrically. Uh, I have a blog on this topic um, on my website, virtualheadexpecialist.com. You can read about a lot more detail about NDPH there. All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye.